Hello everybody, Manix here. Going to be doing a knife review on one of my all-time favorites, the CRKT Foresight. This is a beautiful beast of a knife. It's very elegant and smooth, kind of classy, while at the same time being very brutish and nasty looking. And I believe this knife, if you were to ask me, it represents both of these parties at the same time in perfect harmony. Let's get the specs down first. Blade length of three, I wrote this down a while ago and I kind of scribbled it, 3.55 inches. Handle length of 5.17 inches, making the overall length 8.75 inches, and if you add 3.55 to 5.17, you'll get a different number, but that's what their website says. I think it just has, a di has something to do with adding the different lengths together is different from adding the overall length together. I, I don't know. I don't know. That's just the specs I read. Uh, the weight is 6.2 ounces, so it's on the heavier side. Aluminum handle scales here with a titanium nitride finish. We have what looks like probably an aluminum backspacer there. Could also be FRN. Who cares? AUS 8 blade steel. It is tip down, right hand carry only. It is the IKBS system. I'll talk about that in a minute. It's flipper only. Flipper is jimped there, by the way. Hallelujah. Liner lock. It's thick. It's a thick knife. It's not for the slim hearts. So what do I like about this knife so much? Well, I like how it's really smooth. Its deployment is extremely quick. It's manual. It's not assisted or anything like that. You can see how smooth it is. That's because of the IKBS system. Basically, it's a bunch of ball bearings on a track. You can almost see them. You can see some sort of cylinders right there peering through the orange. Those are not washers. Those are the ball bearings where the washers normally would go. They're just on a track, a cylindrical track, and they're really smooth. And it makes the blade deploy very quickly. It almost feels like an automatic knife. You wash my arm. It's completely in the wrist movement right there for being such a big, heavy folder. That's quite a feat. I think all knives should have the IKBS system. And some people argued, well, when you take the knife apart, the ball bearings kind of get loose and it gets all over the place and it's annoying. Yeah, I could see that, but they fixed that with their CRKT when they made the... I forget the name of the knife, but it's like a lightning-looking knife. I did a review of that one. It's, it's also extremely smooth. I don't have it with me at the moment, but it's a washer that has ball bearings embedded inside of the washer, so you just kind of take it out as one single piece and it's not messy. They should, I think every single knife should have that. It's so smooth. I don't know why they don't do that. I, I don't know. I don't. I know very little about knife making, so I might be a complete moron. Maybe there's a big reason why they don't do that very often. I don't know. But I wish more knives had it. I'm just really glad this one has it. It fits very well because it's such a big, heavy knife. So I like flippers, but I think it's slightly annoying. You have to constantly keep it, give a huge wrist flick all the time. You know, sometimes I just like if it just cooperates. Opens up every single time. No effort whatsoever. Not even using like the pointer finger. Just using the side of it. Very good. So I really like this knife. I like how big and heavy it is, but at the same time, not. When people look at this and they see that it's it's there's very few, there's not really any texturing here. It's very smooth. It's a smooth aluminum. We have no jimping on the spine right here. We have a rounded spine on the blade, by the way, which is absolutely gorgeous. Love that. It's a nice little touch. Adds to its elegance. I think the brutish elegance this knife displays. Um, but what I like about it, I like how it's smooth and it doesn't have a lot of tactical things people want in their blades, but I still would qualify this knife as a tactical folder. Here's why. It's all in the shape. As you can see, these big old cutouts right here, the big old finger choils, it's a very extreme design. What I mean, I made a video on this before, I think, but, oh no, maybe I didn't. Oh, who cares? What I mean by extreme design is that it's not very versatile, but if you get the right hand, the right hand size, which my large size hand right here, for glove reference, happens to fit perfectly, it will be extremely comfortable. Some knives that are not ergonomic, they're just basically like a rectangle or a slight curved rectangle, something like that, they're not quite as comfortable, but you can have a lot of different hand positions on the handle of the knife without it being too uncomfortable. This is either going to be extremely comfortable in your hand, or it's going to be extremely uncomfortable in your hand. For me, it happens to be extremely comfortable. It just looks like it was molded. It looks like I grabbed a piece of clay and just clinched on it, and that's what happened. So for my hand anyway, again, if you have large size hands for gloves, that's pretty much going to be perfect for you. And I like how even though it's not jimped on the back, they have this cut out right here which your thumb fat kind of rests into and you get a really secure grip on this thing now again there is jimping on the side of the flipper right there as you can see as well as the liner lock which kind of adds up to it so there is some extra grip right there which i think that's pretty important because you don't want to if you're thrusting this for whatever reason you don't want your fingers sliding up there that would 
hurt pretty bad, obviously. But no, this is extremely secure with, without being a very gym knife at all, and I think that's quite an admirable feat. I also like the hole they have right here in the spine because when you flip it, when you use the flipper, when your finger drops down, it doesn't bash into the side of it. It has kind of some room to sink into, so it's even comfortable to flip it that way, too. That's also just a really nice touch. It's just a really beautiful looking knife, I think. Lanyard hole right there, but I never use lanyards on folders, but whatever. I like backspacers on knives too, by the way. I prefer them over flow through knives. Although this is somewhat flow through, as you can see right there. So I like all the attention to detail, the cutouts, the bevels, how comfortable it is, the rounded spine right here. I love the blade shape itself. Um, it's kind of like a modified, not a modified, it's almost like a a recurve drop point, I would call that. Recurve spear point. I don't know, I'm going to call it a rear, a recurve drop point. That's what I'm going to call this, as you can see. How the blade kind of bevels out and goes back up. That's going to accelerate the slash motion, which is also especially good for defense. It's not that big of a deal, but it's I like it. Instead of just being a regular drop point, it curves out like that, which, again, it's almost like a slight kukri. Not an extreme kukri, but it's it's just, it's it's almost like a kukri that kind of got bent inward, and it's not too extreme. I really really like that as well. I love the blade shape on there. Titanium nitride coating. It's not the best, but it's not as bad as just like a Teflon coating that you see on cheaper blades. It's it's mid grade, I would call it. So it's I've had this knife for quite some time. You can see there's still no scratches on it. I haven't used it that heavily, but I haven't used it that lightly either. Titanium nitride tends to hold pretty well. I like the pocket clip on here a lot. Some people don't. I happen to like it because it stays out of the way of your grip, as you can see there. I like how short and stubby it is. Some people don't like that. I like it, actually. I just, I think it fits the knife pretty well. It's, I, I like it. Some people think it's weird looking. I, I, I don't mind it, actually. I like how it's small and short, and it's not in the way of your grip. And that's kind of the point of this knife, is to sort of feel almost like a fixed blade once it's in your hand. Extremely strong lockup. I have a little bit of side to side there, but it's, it's, it's like nothing. Just enough to fit a sheet of paper through, maybe, if that, maybe half of that. But I can, I can promise you I can adjust that out, I can tighten it, it would still fly out the handle. Um, there is pretty much no, yeah, there's no up and down in this guy. No up and down in this bad boy. Something it's kind of cool, they have an internal stop pin, so you can't even see it right there. Well, can you? Yeah, you can see it right there. But it's inside of the blade, there's a cutout inside of the tang of the blade. And I think that's a slightly superior design to having one right there. Just barely, but it, it's just so elegant, so beautiful. Love how fast it is. I think this can be a good tactical folder, despite it being not very grippy and grippiness and jimpiness and all that stuff. And I don't really care about knives when it comes to defense. I, I think there's better ways to defend yourself, aka a gun. But not everyone can get guns, and some people are. It's hard. I'm not going to get into that. Basically, knives are a much cheaper, quicker, easier option when it comes to defense. I think it's good to have a defensive blade on you, especially if you can't get a gun or can't own a gun or you're in a gun-free zone, or whatever it is. Although I think knives are usually not allowed in gun-free zones either. That sucks. Either way, though, this is a good defensive knife, although it is not its main purpose. It is basically just a big, handsome, fondling blade that is very functional. It is a very hard-working knife, but it is very good-looking, and a lot of people may not want to use it for hard work, so that's kind of a downside you might be able to consider, but I think it's beautiful, and it is a good, although not the best, defensive option. It's a good defensive option. You've you got a decent amount of reach here, a lot to work with. You've got the recurve on the edge. It's not going to get knocked out of your hand very easily. One thing I will say, pulling it out of the pocket is slightly difficult. Uh, if you just pull it out the normal way like this, sometimes, because of the clip's so flat, it doesn't shoot out, go straight, and then pinch down. It just sort of gradually goes from straight up to sinking onto the handle itself. So it kind of gets... I don't know, it gets kind of stuck to your pants. So when, as you try to pull it out, you're... If you're pulling it out from right here and touching the pocket clip, you'll kind of press down on the pocket clip, and then it will continue to pinch harder on your pocket while you're trying to re pull it out of your pocket. So what I do is I have to grab it from the side like this, and then it reaches out no problem. Uh, so not that big of a deal, but if you are getting into the whole defensive point of view, that is a pretty big downside, because if your adrenaline's going and your life is in danger, and you're used to knives you know, just grabbing them and pulling them out, and this doesn't come out in that time, you have to remember, oh yeah, crap, I'm carrying the CRKT Foresight, and that amount of time you have to remember that. So, uh, yeah, kind of a downside right there, but once the knife is in your hand, it's it's pretty good for defense, so I'll just leave it at that. Very beautiful, love how smooth it is, love its bank vault lockup. I like the pocket clip, actually. Love how it feels in the hand, I like how it's just 
Just a big old fondling blade that's very functional. AOS 8 is a mid-grade steel. It's affordable. Um, this knife's slightly expensive for what you are getting. As far as the blade steel goes, you can find these usually for around 80 bucks, sometimes a little bit more. That's about how much it costs when I found it. Sometimes they're closer to 90 Sometimes they approach the $100 range. That's where it gets a little expensive. It would be nice to see this knife closer to 55 60 bucks, but there is a lot of work into the... I believe the cutouts of the handle itself and the IKBS system, and then you have the rounded spine, and there's just a lot of attention to detail, and it just kind of makes the knife naturally more expensive, even if the blade still is only mid-grade. Some people say, well, for that price, I could get VG10. For that price, I could get S30B. Yeah, you can probably get better blade steels for the same price point, but you won't get everything else about the knife's design. If you throw on a more expensive blade steel onto this knife, you'd easily approach the above $100 range, I believe. So that's it. That is the CRKT Foresight, one of my favorite knives ever, both by design and function. It's beautiful, functions very well, um, and I'm just really impressed by it. That's it.